So cancer is frequently caused by uh, hyperactive signaling by uh, uh, members of a class of proteins known as kinases. And in fact, uh, most of the drugs that are most promising in oncology today are drugs that target these kinases. Now, the challenge is that there are over 500 of these kinases encoded in the human genome, but for the disease you really only want to target one or two of these. And the problem is existing drugs are really poor at discriminating just one or two of these among a set of the, of the whole 500. So what we've done is to um, test most of the existing drugs targeting kinases, as well as other kinase uh, inhibitors from research labs, and test them individually against the majority of kinases um, in the human genome. And we've made that data then publicly accessible, not only through our, public, uh, through our publication, Nature Biotechnology, but also through an online web tool called the Kinase Inhibitor Resource that makes all of that data completely available to researchers and clinicians worldwide today to make use of that information. Right, well I think there's a lot of ways in which um, this information is going to push uh, cancer therapy uh, forward. And you know, one way is just in elucidating the uh, targets hit by existing kinase targeted drugs will allow us to understand which of those targets are important for producing the therapeutic benefit of those drugs and which targets might be responsible for the toxicities that are associated with some of these agents. And a second um, uh, thing that I think this will, will add to the discussion is that right now there are only about a dozen FDA approved drugs targeting protein kinases despite the fact that there are many more kinases that we think are important in cancer. And so we need uh, to develop drugs that can target these. So imagine a wall full of balloons, like at a shooting gallery at a county fair. Now each of those balloons represents, each balloon represents one protein kinase um, of the 500 in the human genome. Now generally a pharmaceutical company uh, will spend years of research in order to identify the one kinase or balloon that they need to pop in order to achieve a therapeutic effect. So the drug in this case is represented by the scatter shot from a shotgun uh, that you test by firing at this walls of, of uh, balloons. So now imagine doing this in the dark with only a flashlight that can illuminate one balloon at a time. So you shine your flashlight onto the balloon you know you want to uh, target and you pull the trigger. Now you can see right away whether you hit the target that you want to hit, but you have no idea what's going on for these other balloons. Now why is that a problem? Because many of these balloons play important roles in normal body physiology. And if you don't know that your drug also targets these kinases, uh, there are going to be toxicities that are going to limit the effectiveness of the therapy. So what our study has basically done is to turn the lights on in the shooting gallery so that at least for the uh, collection of drugs and inhibitors that we've tested, we can see most of the balloons on the wall and know which of those are inhibited by the, uh, the drugs or the shotguns that we've tested. Okay, so we're really excited about where we go from here because now we're using this collection of inhibitors and the information about the kinases that they target in order to discover kinases that are critical for the growth of cancer. And so one example of this case is in the case of so-called triple negative breast cancer, which is a less common form of breast cancer, but that's terribly uh, aggressive and unfortunately is not um, responsive to any of the existing targeted therapies that are effective in many other kinds of breast cancer. So these patients really need new uh, therapeutic approaches. And so we're using this collection of drugs as a discovery tool to discover the kinases that are critical for the growth of triple negative breast cancer. And we can use that information then to parlay into new therapeutic approaches for triple negative.